Hey, it's the Terminian Hero here, and we're playing Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. So let's get to it. I would love to play as both Mario and Luigi, but you can only pick one or the other, so we're just gonna play as Mario. So yeah, as I'm sure many of you know, Super Mar- oh, by the way, this is Poison Mushroom, you don't want to touch it. It will kill you. Those were introduced in this game. But anyways, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is a very difficult game. It was supposed to be the sequel. In Japan, this is Super Mario Bros. 2. But it was so hard that they had to give us a, a completely different game in, for Super to be Super Mario Bros. 2 in America. I really thought I died there. I, it didn't look like I still had my star. It really scared me. Anyways, we've finished our first overworld course. Finished our first overworld level. Now time to go to our first underground level. So yeah, an idea of how hard this game is. The original... NES version of Super Mario Bros. 1 let... Uh, you, you couldn't save it, your game at all. And then in the... Um, in the Super Nintendo version and Super Mario All-Stars... Come on. Yeah, in the Super Nintendo version and Super Mario All-Stars, you could save your game after every world. However, um, on Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels here, on the original Famicom version, which is, the Famicom is the Japanese NES, pretty much. So on the Famicom version of The Lost Levels here, you could save your game every world, but here on the, on the All-Stars version on the Super Nintendo, you can save your game after every level and you are going to love that feature because this game is really hard it's so hard in fact that basically the reason it's so hard is because they wanted to have this pretty much take off after Super Mario Bros 1 so they wanted this game to start out, you know, almost as hard as the original Super Mario Bros. ended. Man, that blooper was getting in my way. I wanted to jump around him, and I couldn't do it without falling into that pit. I mean, I could have done it, but it would have been really hard. So yeah, this is our first athletic stage. Which basically means, whoa, we're going over a bunch of pits. I don't know how I made it out of that. But yeah, athletic stage. We're up on a bunch of platforms over a big pit. It's pretty much all there is to know about that. And now we're going into our first castle stage. So anyways, basically the story of this game is... Pretty much the same as in Super Mario Bros. 1, where, you know, just Bowser kidnapped Peach, you gotta go save her. The story of Super Mario Bros. 1 did mention something about Bowser turning toads into... into bricks and other stuff. But, uh, I don't believe that was mentioned in the story of this game, although it probably still happened. Like, this game is... pretty much has the same story as Super Mario Bros. 1, so... if it wasn't mentioned, then I'm pretty sure it can be assumed. I really want to get a fire flower to the end. Come on. Because then we can do this, and reveal that he's a Goomba. Wasn't Bowser at all. Let's rescue Peach. 
Thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. Of course. Yeah. So on to world 2-1. Uh, there's... Every world in this game has four levels, and there's... Eight worlds in this game if you're just trying to get to the end of it, but there's actually five secret worlds. Um, you can get to world 9 if you beat this game without skipping any levels. And you can get to worlds A, B, C, and D on the original Famicom version if you beat this game eight times. Thankfully, the Super Nintendo version, which I'm playing right now, only requires you to play the game one time to get to those worlds. Oh no! No, I wanted to bounce high. I pressed a button, I guess I just didn't press it at the right time. Anyways... Oh no! Oh no! Not the invisible blocks! Okay, Triple Goomba Army. That's that, I believe we're gonna be going into our first underwater stage right now. It's kinda weird, cause on the overworld stages you can't swim, but then... Oh, we're not swimming yet. But then there are underwater stages where you are swimming, so... It's kinda strange, but it was the same way with Super Mario Bros. 1. Or at least the Super Nintendo version. I'm not sure if it was the same way in the NES version. I mean, I know you couldn't swim on the overworld stages in the NES versions and Famicom versions of these games, but I'm not sure if it actually showed water in those versions, because, of course, these versions have all their graphics updated for the Super Nintendo. Ah, yes, this. We've got, in order to get across this, we've got to make some invisible coin blocks up here to get across. Where is this one? I know there's a second one here. Okay, there we go. So I should note that the physics in... The, in Super Mario Bros. 1 and the Lost Levels are really weird, so... Yeah, he, Mario's kinda hard to control in these games, but... We'll, we'll do our best, see what we can go. Off to another athletic stage, it appears. And we've got Flying Fish. A.K.A. Cheap Cheeps. And Flying Squids, A.K.A. Bloopers. And Flying Turtles, which, you know, like to swim, so... What is it with all of the flying marine life in Mario? Alright, on to Castle 2 here. Let's see if we can flame that flame Bowser again. Uh, see if he's actually the real Bowser. See if our adventure's over this quickly, even though I already said that there's like eight worlds to beat this game, so of course he's not the real Bowser. And now that we lost, now that we're D back down to small Mario. I don't think we're going to be flaming Bowser. We'll just have to axe down his bridge the old-fashioned way. 
old fashioned way. The old fashioned way. We're just like wearing really old clothes. It's the old fashioned way. Um. Okay, there we go. Peach? No, thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. At least we saved two toads this time. But yeah, that fake Bowser, I believe, was a Koopa Troopa. Don't expect me to know what all of them are. Because I don't. In worlds A through D, and possibly in world 9, they're actually the enemies that are the false, are the fake Bowsers. And I guess in worlds A through C, because it's the real one in... Actually, no. Because it's actually different what the fake Bowsers are in worlds A through D between the Super Nintendo version and the original Famicom version. And that also changes whether or not the one in World D is actually a fake Bowser. Like, I'm pretty sure he's a fake Bowser in the original Famicom version, but in the All-Stars version here, the one in World D is actually the real Bowser. So now we're on to our first underwater level, and Mario's physics being awkward doesn't stop just because he's underwater. Also, when you go above a pit while underwater, it tries to suck you in, which is really strange. But whatever. So yeah, we can't jump out of the water. We actually have to stay in. Which is a bit odd, but I guess they just couldn't do that at the time. Whoa! I was pressing the button there, but apparently not fast enough, because like I said, it tries sucking you in the hole. Yeah, like I said before, physics in this game are awkward. Oh boy. Bloopers are also really awkward. So that's the game over screen. We're just gonna ignore that. And see, we get to continue from this specific level, not the start of the actual world. See, so yeah, I, I totally just showed that off on purpose. You know, it wasn't me, you know, messing up, playing badly, dying horribly. No, no, that, that was totally intentional. But yeah, we're gonna be seeing that screen a lot, because like I said, this is a hard game. A lot of people that have beat this game consider it one of their great gaming achievements. Personally, I don't think it's that hard, but it's still pretty hard. Of course, maybe that's just because I've grown up with this game for longer than I remember. I've been playing video games since I was two, so... Yeah. Anyways... That's about all the time we have in this video, so we will be doing level 3-3 next time. I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.